So which of the following conditions is most likely responsible for the patient's presentation? Previa, recreta, rupture, basic previa. Okay, 32-year-old pregnant woman at 32 weeks, 36 weeks gestation is brought to the emergency department due to the onset of severe abdominal pain and vaginal bleeding. She has a history of two prior C-sections. Long examination rather than is tender, distended, and blood pressure is low, 9, 90 over 60. Heart rate is 150. Okay, so let's think for a second. She has abdominal, severe abdominal pain, and she's bleeding. Oh, and prior C sections, which is, I'm trying to remember which one the code's for. It's huge. Um, let me think. Yeah. Uh, well, a lot of different factors in my head buzzing. So like usually when I see severe pain and vaginal bleeding, I'm, there's, well, I don't think, I can't remember. I don't think previous painful, like when I think of painful, I think of abruptio, placenta, a uterine rupture. But when I see that low blood pressure, I think of vasopressin, uh yeah vasa previa because it will compress the it will compress the umbilical cord or something like that so i'm i this is one of those kind of going back and looking at the symptoms for each of these but uh i see prior c-sections let's see the uterine rupture or, or placenta abruption um okay And talk to me about the difference of the two. What what does each one mean? Like, if you were described to me, what is placental uh, or abrupt placenta? What what is that? I believe placenta abruption means it's just like a detachment from the uterine wall, and then like like the placenta, and so there's like bleeding that starts accumulating between the placenta and the uh, endometrium. Okay, good. So in my mind, when I work through these questions, I'm I'm like, in my mind, this is what I'm thinking, right? I'm trying to draw and exactly what you described, right? So you have, you know, your uterus, you have your placenta, and then you have umbilical cord and you have baby, right? So if you're talking about, you know, placenta abrupta, right, this attachment, it, you know, this attachment between the uterine wall and the placenta has now detached, right? That's kind of what that looks like. And then how about uterine rupture? What does that look like? That's just like a straight tear in the uterus like through the through through the uterus i believe yeah so you have a tear right let's say you have a tear here in the uterus right and where is baby located if you have a tear in the uterus uh i don't know so baby in theory could be in the abdomen right if you know baby could be floating out here right yeah i've seen yeah i've seen like their hand or leg get out or something like that yeah, so the, so you're thinking about kind of two different things, right? So what what do you think is kind of most likely here, I guess? Um, and well, I guess what are the causes of uh, uterine rupture versus abrupt the placenta? That's that's the big kicker for me is that the C section, two prior C section is like kind of huge, so I'm just gonna assume that it's uterine rupture because. Uh, I remember them saying like, if you want to have a lot of kids, you can only have like two C-sections or you increase your risk for uterine rupture. So I'm going to assume it's that. Final answer? Sure. Good. So yeah, you're talking about risk factors here, right? So one of the things here is the reason why I mentioned this to you of here is I was trying to, you to also look at the, uh, um, look at the physical exam. Her abdomen is tender and distended. Right. So meaning that it's even bigger than you usually. So probably kiddo is floating around in the ab abdominal space. Oh, you, you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Yeah. I, I never knew how to kind of process that terminology yet. So. Yeah. So, so for instance, obviously, you know, uh, pregnant women, you know, their bellies are going to be big. Right. But, you know, one of the clinical findings of uterine rupture is that you can actually start like palpating. Sometimes you can palpate like, 
you know, like it, obviously if you do an ultrasound, you can see it, but um, you can palpate like arms, legs, things outside of the uterus, which is not good. Right. So. Okay. Good. But yeah, so two C-sections highly susceptible of uterine rupture, life-threatening on such an emergency when the uterine tears, usually previous C-section scar, right? Um, previa uh, percreta, these are going to be kind of the, when, you know, the, um, the um, well, previa is the placenta over the os, which usually just is painless bleeding, right? Percreta is when the, the placenta invades into the uterine wall. And usually what happens is during, um, during delivery is when it's hard to deliver the placenta because it's so adherent to the uterus. So, um, I've seen this in real life. Um, it's not, it's not good, um, because they can't stop the bleeding. You have massive hemorrhage. And so they had to do emergent hysterectomy to stop the bleeding. So that was scary. Uh, patient almost died. Okay. Um, I brought the placenta, right. Uh, placenta from the uterine raw, usually abdominal pain, um, vaginal bleeding, uh, fetal distress. However, C-sections and then severity of the presentation makes uterine rupture more likely. And then vasoprevia, as you talked about, right? Um, fetal blood vessels cross the cervical os, putting them at risk for rupture during labor usually, and it's painless. It usually is not much pain, but um, there is fetal distress. So, um, so paracreta, yeah, to attach it. So that's kind of like, uh, yeah, accreta, but I, I think- Yeah, so remember, so- you have um, accreta, increta, percreta, right? Um, the way I remember it is um, it's an alpha order about how how serious it is, right? So accreta is not as serious as increta, and then percreta is the worst. Okay. And does that just mean it's like deeper? Like with Yeah. So if you were to kind of draw it, it would be kind of here's your uterus, right? Here's your placenta, right? And here's kind of your attachments. So the normal attachments here, but let's say like accreta is you kind of start getting into right? The uterus, right? And then um, increta is like almost almost full thickness of the myometrium. You know what I mean? So here's muscle layer, right? Myometrium, right? And then percreta is, you know, it goes past the myometrium and it can go into like the rectum or the bladder or something. Okay. It's just thicker. And obviously the worst that it attaches when you deliver baby, you won't be able to deliver the placenta, meaning that mom will continue to bleed and bleed and bleed and bleed, right? And so the only way you can control this sometimes is you have to take out the whole uterus to kind of ligate the vessels or else they'll bleed to death. You get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you have to ligate it because when it comes out, it just starts bleeding. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Because you remember when you deliver the placenta, that's when the uterus gains a lot of tone and stops the bleeding, right? But if you can't deliver the placenta, then it'll keep bleeding. So yeah okay um can you scroll down sure uh, i was just gonna look at the so again because it can't detach there's significant bleeding and i guess they're hypothetical from the bleeding okay and then you, you said you have to do a hysterectomy yeah uh, uh if you can't control the bleeding that is i've seen that in real life um patient had um pl uh, pl placenta Say it again. Try, but you try to ligate it at first. No, I mean, you, it, um, you try, but it's just so bloody. Like you, you, like you like it, you like it, you like it, you can't, and then you're like, okay, like I got, like you can't control the bleeding, so you just have to do a hysterectomy. You got to take out the uterus because the placenta is adherent. It's practically one with the uterus. You know what I mean? So you can never stop the bleeding completely, and unless you, you can't leave the placenta in there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, it will, it'll, you know, for one, it'll keep bleeding. For two, um, that's a retained product within the uterus, which can't get infected too, you know, so. Uh, do you understand, I mean, I don't know if I have the chart in front of me, but <laughs> the different types of abortion, there's like a, a terminal one, an incomplete one, a complete one. Um, I would have to look at that chart again. I can't remember exactly off the top of my mind. Yeah. I would have to see a question about it. Right. 